أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد ورضى اللهم عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين رب إشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي مدي بيوز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته I pray that uh, the fast and the prayer at night have been going well inshallah for all of you inshallah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast our prayer our good deeds and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who are free who are set free from the hellfire during the night of Ramadan ameen ya rabbal alamin my topic for tonight is perhaps an easy topic to talk about but it's very trying to apply and uh, i don't claim to be an expert on this topic in fact speaking about this topic attaining taqwa reminds me of a couplet of poetry where the poet says wa ghayru taqiyan yansahu an-nasa bit-taqwa tabib yudawi an-nas wa huwa alilu as someone who is not in a state of of taqwa advising others of taqwa is like a a physician who is treating others of an ailment that he is he or she is suffering from because with taqwa we cannot claim to be muttaqis an ayah came to mind earlier in surah an-najm where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fala tuzakku anfusakum don't claim self righteousness tazkiya that you are purified huwa a'lamu biman ittaqa he alone subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the one who is in taqwa and another ayah comes to mind about taqwa that taqwa is not something that is tangible or something that is that is measurable uh, where he says subhanahu wa ta'ala inna akramakum indallahi atqakum the most honorable of you indeed the most honorable of you with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who have more taqwa of him subhanahu wa ta'ala and then he ends it by saying this ayah in particular surah al-hujurat inna allaha alimun khabir indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing all aware so taqwa is known through our behavior our character now before i begin this topic on taqwa it's very important to know the meaning of it in arabic the word itself comes from the word wiqaya wiqaya uh, it's it's to protect to safeguard al-hifdhu wal-himayatu hafidhtuhu wa to to preserve something to safeguard something this is what taqwa uh, about put it in context nowadays we've had lockdowns uh, some countries had uh, complete lockdowns uh, we have certain measures like social distancing we have you know uh, measures like staying away from crowds or certain number of crowd or masajid of course it's it's a precautionary measures they lock down because of of this this is what taqwa is about the reason it's happening is to to safeguard and to protect to protect ourselves to protect others from the harm and of the spread of the of the infection taqwa is about protection and safeguarding us um that's the literal meaning of taqwa like for example when you go out on the street you wear shoes to protect your feet and this meaning actually was mentioned uh, to um, sayyidna umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu when he asked one of the sahaba one, one narration says it was Abu Huraira who said this. Another was Ubay ibn Ka'b, as Imam ibn Kathir mentions in his tafsir, where he said to uh, Umar, عنه, he said, Taqwa is when you walk on a thorny path. What do you do? So Umar عنه, answered, he said, of course, I will lift up my cloak and I'll make sure I don't step on thorns. So he said, this is the meaning of Taqwa. And one of the poets said a beautiful, uh, beautiful poetry about it. He said, Khalli dhunuba let go of sins as much as you can. He says, all of it. Obviously, try. If you don't try, you will not, you will not get there. That is taqwa. And do like a person who walks on a path full of thorns. He is cautious. He or she is cautious of what they see. لا تحقرن صغيرة do not trivialize or undermine صغيرة a minor sin إن الجبال من الحصى because mountains can be formed of pebbles this is تقوى as the Sahaba defined it let's give another example of the literal meaning of تقوى when we drive our cars we make sure we check the vehicle first we put on the seat belt we abide by the by the uh, laws and 
this might come, it might be difficult in the beginning, but we do it. We remember that this is done in order for, to, to guarantee our own safety and the safety of, of others. And if we feel, uh, um, you know, complacent about it, we may remember the consequences of not abiding by the rules. What could happen? So at the end of the day, all these things that we do, the precautionary measures that we do, are to or is to guarantee our safety. It's the same for a student. If there are students who are watching, they try their best to avoid things that can affect, that can, that can negatively impact their studies. And every time they feel lazy, they'll remember that if I don't do what I'm supposed to do, I might fail or it will lead me to negative consequences. They also remember the positive things that will come out of them taking these precautions in order to avoid what they're not supposed to do, right? Um, now, if we want to, so taqwa in the Islamic meaning, it means is to make between you and the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a barrier or a protection. Many times in the Quran, about 182 times, the word taqwa is mentioned. Ya ayyuhaladina amanu taqullah. O you who have believed wholeheartedly, willingly, beware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like uh, the khutaba, the khatibs, when they give the khutba also, they remind us of taqwa, always. It is the wasiya, it is the counsel that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to all the nations before us. وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا اللَّهِ In Surah Al-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We have indeed enjoined and counseled, advised those before you who have been given the book and you too to have the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To put it into context again, the taqwa, to be aware and conscious of what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For someone who is an employee, you get an employment and you are given a staff book. In the staff book, you read about the things that you're supposed to do. Of course, in the contract, you know your duties, you know your responsibilities, and you are paid accordingly. So if you break any of these rules, then you are your work is at jeopardy. You may lose your work. You may lose your job. So you read what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. And then you apply it. This is taqwa. So you try your best not to displease the employer because you know of the no negative consequences. You also know if you excel in this, there are promotions and there are many positive things to achieve. Someone who's in business, someone who has contracts, they are aware, or they're aware of what the client wants from them. To give an example about Salah, for example, I've gave this before. When it's time for Salah, whether it's the beginning of the time or there's a certain time, of course, where uh, we are supposed to pray. If our employer is standing there and we're supposed to do some work, we make sure that we do it because we want to please our employer. If you are in business and your client or the customer is there, you wouldn't be on your phone or you, don't, you wouldn't be distracted from them because you aim to please them in order not to, lo not to lose them. So this is just an example of, of how we can implement taqwa in our daily life. Despite the difficulties of it and the inconvenience that may, we may go through it, but we remember the bigger picture. We remember the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what comes with it, and we remember what may happen if we displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> now, why is Ramadan a perfect opportunity for us to attain taqwa. In fact, if you read the ayah, all of you know the ayah of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, O you who have cultivated faith. faith. Kutiba alaykum al-siyam. Siyam has been ordained for you. Kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum. As it was ordained upon those before you. La'allakum tattaqoon. In order for you to have taqwa. Allah consciousness, to be conscious and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amazingly enough, the last ayah that talks about fasting also, um, the last ayah that in, in Surah Al-Baqarah that talks about uh, fasting, it's a long ayah, talking about the marital relations during the month of, of Ramadan, uh, 
Allah shows you his signs in order for you to have consciousness of him, uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. Now, in the month of Ramadan, we find that we are aware of what we, you know, we make sure that we don't eat anything to, in order not to break our fast. We make sure not to drink our, anything in order not to break our fast. Even nobody knows about us fasting, yet we don't really... We don't care because we've established that we are doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what taqwa is about. To have that connection, that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to do things for his sake to please him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is a perfect example. This can be also uh, um, applied with other acts of worship. Salah, like when we're alone, is our salah alone? Do we have the same level of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like if we are in a gathering? Do we take our time and read every ayah and, and every tasbih and, and make sure like that is, this is the, the, the best salah that we can pray? This is the, the taqwa. In Ramadan, we find ourselves more aware of what we say. We avoid, there's less backbiting, there's less gossiping, there's less swearing. Even we are reminded to control our anger. The Prophet ﷺ told us that if somebody provokes you, فَإِنْ سَابَّهُ أَحَدٌ أَوْ شَاتَمَهُ or swears at you or insults you, فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِمُ He or she should say, I am fasting. So fasting is a reminder to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's a hadith I wanted to mention, a famous hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, حُفَّةِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ Jannah is surrounded by difficult things, things that are uh, not easy for our lower selves. وَحُفَّةِ النَّارُ بِالشَّهَوَاتِ And Jahannam is surrounded by the unlawful desires. So in the month of Ramadan, it is the month where we are in the zone of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in the mode of being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this should lead to being conscious of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala in other things like our gaze, our looks. In Ramadan, of course, we are more conscious. We make sure we don't look at haram things or we avoid it as much as we can. And this proves to us that the month of Ramadan is the month of, yes, we can. Yes, we can be righteous. Yes, we can. We can be muttaqin. We can be God conscious. Now, um, I'd like to share with you a story uh, in the minutes that are left. I think you, some of you may have heard this story, but let's put it in, in a context. This story will tell us the uh, the reward of those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, one of the things that, that should be enough for us, a great motivation, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares his love for the muttaqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. Bala man awfa bi'ahdi wa taqa fa inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. The one who fulfills his covenant and is conscious, then certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are God conscious, those who are aware of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The story was uh, told to us by the Prophet sallallahu himself on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma. The hadith is mentioned by Imam Bukhari and Muslim about the three companions or three friends who took shelter in a cave. فَانْحَدَرَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ صَخْرَةُ مِنَ الْجَبَلِ فَسَدَّتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْغَارِ A huge rock, a boulder fell and blocked the uh, opening of the of the cave. And then they said, لا يُنَجِّيكُم مِنْ هَذِي الصَّغْرَةِ إِلَّا أَنْ تَدْعُوا اللَّهَ بِصَالِحِ أَعْمَالِكُمْ The only salvation for you now is to make dua upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through righteous things that you did. And think, things which were done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala solely. And this, doing things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires taqwa. Because we, we have different, like we have ulterior motives. But for someone to do something for Allah's sake only, that means this person is conscious, is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first person, he said, I had two elderly parents. My, my elderly parents, I was looking after them and he had the practice or the habit of when he comes in the evening and gets milk, he wouldn't offer it to, uh, he wouldn't have it himself or his wife or his kids before he gives it to his parents or in the afternoon. One day he came late and he found that his parents were resting. And he said, I stood all night. I didn't want to disturb him until almost the time of Fajr. Imagine, this is taqwa because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of us to be dutiful to our parents. In uh, Surah to Luqman, Anishkur li wa li walidayk. Be grateful to me and to your parents. 
So this person, subhanAllah, because of this, he said, Ya Allah, if I did this for your sake, Ya Allah, then remove this, make a way out for us. It moved a bit, but it wasn't enough for them to leave. Now, before I go on with the story, there's a famous hadith, a number of imams narrated it about the Prophet Sallallahu related, of course, to the uh, duties of our duties towards our parents, where he ascended the minbar. And he said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. You may have heard this hadith. And then when the Sahaba inquired, they said, Ya Rasulullah, why did you say Ameen three times? And he said, Jibreel alayhi salam came and made du'as. And every time he said the du'a, and he said to me, Qul Ameen, say Ameen. So I said Ameen. And one of them was about someone, man adraka walidayhi ahaduhuma aw kilay aw aw kilahuma falam yukfar lahu aw falam yudkhil al-jannata aw dakhal al-nar. That the person who has adraka, like he had, he or she had the opportunity to live with his or her parents and they were not the cause for him to enter jannah. That person is far from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibreel alayhi salam is the one making dua and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam is saying ameen. He's saying to him, say Amin, and the Prophet Sallallahu said Amin. Rahima Anfuhu, Thumma Rahima Anfu, Thumma Rahima Anfu, another narration that uh, he's humiliated, he's disgraced, he's this. Who's that person? Man adraka abawayhi ahadahuma aw kila aw kilayhima falam yudkhila falam yudkhilahu al-jannah aw falam yudkhil falam yudkhil al-jannah. That he or she missed that opportunity. Now, our relationship with our parents requires taqwa, especially when they're elderly now. You don't need them. You are self-sufficient. They need you. And if we fulfill that, the, the duties of our parents, this will train us to have taqwa in, our, in other duties with our siblings, with our spouses, with our children, to actually give them time to be aware of what happens in their life. This is taqwa. It all requires taqwa. All right. The next person, the next friend, he said... Um, he said that he had a cousin, and the context now is relevant to Ramadan as well. He said this female cousin he had, he wanted, he asked her many times to have an unlawful relationship with her. And she kept, uh, she kept, uh, uh, you know, rejecting and, 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 and uh, pushing him away, etc. Until he said one day she was in a difficulty, she was in need. Um, and he gave her a certain amount of money, about 120 golden uh, pieces. And he said that was the condition. And just before the, the act, the unlawful act was done, she reminded him that it was not lawful. She was not lawful for him. Uh, needless for me to get into the details of the actual hadith. I'm just narrating the, the meaning of it. And he just remembered immediately. I'd say that's a taqwa. He just left and he didn't even ask for that money. And he said, Ya Allah, if I did this for your sake, whatever I did, Ya Allah, deliver us or save us from what we are in. And it moved a little bit. It was still not enough for them to, to leave. The context of this hadith, in the month of Ramadan, it's time for us to evaluate the relationships that we have. Or are we the things that we do in our lives that may lead to indecent acts or acts of fahisha, may Allah protect us. Whether it's the nowadays, subhanAllah, these the acts of indecency and what leads to them. There have never been times where it was so attached to us. It's on our mobile phone. It, it's in our pockets. It, it's in, in our, on our bed. So we need taqwa, especially when we are alone. Because when we are outside, we are conscious of others and we would not commit certain sins because others are looking for us. Or if someone respectable is looking at us, we will avoid doing that out of respect to that person. Like uh, one of the uh, imams said, لا تجعل الله أهون أهون الناظرين إليك. Don't make Allah the least respected out of all those who are looking at you. Right. So Ramadan teaches us to, be, to have taqwa consciousness in our relationships. Something that is haram, stay away from it. Even if it's difficult, just like the uh, medicine that you take, it has side effects. But eventually it will lead to your cure, to your healing. All right. The third person, it's also relevant to taqwa. He said, استأجرتُ أجراء. I employed some people. فأعطيتهم أجورهم غير رجل واحد ترك الذي له. One of the uh, employees I had, he left without taking what I was owing him. And he said, فثمرتُ أجره. He invested the money that he was owing to this person, to this worker. Nobody was there to tell him this. It's his consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
حتى كثرت منه الأموال until this amount that I invested became a huge amount and then he came after a long time جاءني بعد حين and he said to me يا عبد الله أدي إلي أجري O servant of Allah give me what you owe me so I said to him كل ما ترى من أجرك من الإبل والبقر والغنم والرقيق he said all this that you see camels, sheep, uh, cows uh, uh, different like slaves as well so the man said don't, don't mock at me, please. He said, I'm not mocking at you. He said, I invested this amount for you. And this is what you're owing. And he said, he took it. He said, I, he had no second thoughts that I did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me now, you know, try to take it back from him. He said, oh Allah, if we did this for your sake, ya Allah, help us out. And it moved totally until they were able to leave that cave. One of the fruits of taqwa, the reason I mentioned the story, or before I go into that uh, fruit of taqwa, this is uh, uh, applicable in the context of business. If we are in employment, are we doing what is required of us by the employer? Is the level of work we put in or the level of itqan, excellence or professionalism, is it the same like if the manager is not around? That requires taqwa. If we are in a business, is it, you know, do we, do we really give our full heart into things in, in the service that we provide? So you see, it's very, very important. Do we have straightforward dealings or, we, 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 you know, we, we like to break the law every now and then? This all requires taqwa. Now, one of the fruits of taqwa is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver the muttaqi out. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whomsoever is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like those three that we spoke about, Allah will make a way out for them. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ There are many, many other benefits of the muttaqin, as I said, having the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I'm conscious of the time. Um, I'll end perhaps with a, a hadith that the Prophet ﷺ gave to Sayyidina Mu'ad, the one whom he loved so much. We mentioned before that he declared his love for Mu'ad, uh, radiyallahu anhu. He said to him, Ya Mu'ad, ittaqi Allah haythu ma kunt. Oh Mu'ad, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are, wherever you are. This is the most difficult part of taqwa, um, especially when we are alone. Because when we are with others, we may have that uh, modesty or that, uh, you know, maybe we'll feel hesitant or we'll feel shame. But when we are alone and nobody is, is, is watching, this is the real test. Hence, you find that the categories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put in, in the special shade, in his shade, when there's no shade but his subhanahu wa ta'ala, from them, you'll find many of them are like about something that was done with taqwa. The person who gave with his right hand or with her right hand that the left hand didn't know what the right hand did. The person who was alone and remembered Allah, ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عينا. They remembered Allah while they were alone and the, the eyes started pouring with tears. The person who was invited by, you know, it was a, a, a perfect situation of fornication and he said, someone, he said, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to him, كنت, Beware of Allah, be conscious of Allah, wherever you are. Then, Follow up a bad deed with a good deed. It will wipe it out. حسن, and behave with people in a decent manner. Being a muttaqi does not mean that we don't sin. I'm amazed at some ayat in uh, entire Quran is amazing. In Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah Al Imran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives. Perhaps we'll end with this, Inshallah Taala. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives the qualities of the pious, where He says, "Wasariu ila maghfiratim min Rabbikum wa jannatin ardu wa samat wa ardu uiddat al muttaqin." Hasten towards a forgiveness from your Lord, and a jannah. The width of the jannah is the heavens and the earth. It has been prepared for the pious. Who are the pious? Those who spend in times of ease and in times of difficulty, adversity. Those who suppress the anger. Those who pardon people. And Allah loves those subhanahu wa ta'ala who excel in acts of goodness. Then he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a great hope for all of us. Those who, if they commit an, an act of indecency, a major sin, or they wrong themselves, 
ذكرullah they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fastaghfiru li dhunubihim immediately they seek forgiveness for their sins wa man yaghfiru dhunuba illa Allah who forgives the sins other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa lam yusirru ala ma fa'alu wa hum ya'lamun and they are not persistent on what they do while knowing that that's an act that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know in the lives of the prophets like Yusuf alayhi salam uh, tonight is the night uh, to continue the uh, story of Yusuf alayhi salam in the Quran for those who are reading the full khatam a Jews every night look what happened to his taqwa his taqwa led him from being in be, being a servant into being in charge of the treasures of Egypt and he says innahu man yattaqi wa yasbir فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِينَ Whomsoever has taqwa and patience, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not make the reward of those who excel in goodness go into waste. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who have taqwa, taqwa in everything, in the way when they are alone with their families, in the amount of food they eat, in the amount of things they consume, in, in everything they, they are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they try to please him. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fast and our prayer. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set us all free from the hellfire. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.